Well, hello there. So now that we have all these platforms, maybe some stairs, what are we going to do with it all? We are going to put it together in a unique ground plan and scenic design of your own creation. But be first, be first, before we do that, we first have to make a base for this model that you're going to build. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. It's not the hardest thing, but it has to be done. Much like our little sketch model, right, has a base. We want this Appia project to have a base too, because we're gonna go ahead and use this model box that you have for your Antigone project as well. So we're just designing this next uh, bit of scenic information in the same way as this, so we can go ahead and pull it out and reuse the model box without damaging any of the work that you've previously done. And the way I like to do that, let me get some of this stuff out of the way really quick. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna take a piece of Bristol and I'm gonna go ahead and place it under the box. With a pencil, I'm going to trace the outline of our model box. But before I trace, what I want to do is, line it up here so you can see, the back of the Bristol, I am going to line up with the back of our model box here. So the back of the side piece, but in front of this piece here. So I'm gonna line it up with this line here on the back of the piece. So there'll be one less side you'll have to cut later. So, tracing. Tracing the outside. Wanna make sure we get that curve, because then it's gonna give you all of the available model space that you'll need to complete the project. Right, you'll be able to bring those platforms right down past the proscenium onto the apron and get some really dynamic looks. So here we are. Pretty rough shape, right? But now we understand that we have just essentially measured this footprint here. If we measure, let's just do it in quarter inch scale because that's what we're working in. Here we are, quarter inch. So if we measure, let's go ahead and measure the side of the box here. That foam core in scale is nine inches. So in order for us to fit our little Bristol base inside of this model box, let's go ahead and clear it to one foot, so we have a little extra space to work with. So the way we're gonna do that is, that line that we've just made, that outline we've just made, we're gonna go ahead and take this side in, this side, these two downstage edges, we're gonna take them in, we're gonna offset them one foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my quarter inch scale to do that. One foot in quarter inch scale. And I'll tell you sometimes, even with the best intentions of measuring, uh, it's not gonna to wanna to fit. So the way we deal with that is um, trial and error, right? We're gonna cut, cut, um, more off if we need to, and it's no big deal because it's just a piece of Bristol. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that cutting line on the inside there with my straight edge. Cutting edge here too. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make another quarter inch line on my proscenium 
edge down here. We'll say quarter, quarter. Same thing over here, one foot and quarter inch scale. I'm going to do right there, quarter, quarter, one foot. I'm going to go ahead and sketch that line in as well. I bet you if I do this on this side, line it up over here where I made that last mark, I can go ahead and do a ghost line here, and that'll get me where I want to be. So. With your scissors or your X-Acto knife, I'm choosing the X-Acto knife at this moment in time, go ahead and cut that interior line. Put this off to the side for now. Cut this interior line as well. to the side. Now, I want to keep the edge of our apron line here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a cut to the ghost line we made earlier. To there. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on this side too, just to get out of the way. And then I can continue to cut those interior offsets we made just a little bit earlier. Now, let's go ahead and take our scissors and go ahead and scribe that arc. Okay, it wasn't too bad. Let's see how she fits. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over so I don't even have to worry about those lines, right? Nice, clean, clean edge. It should slip right in. It's pretty good. I'm a little, you can see here on the sides, look. I'm a little wide here. And here, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out of there and do a little bit of trim work. I'm just gonna use the X-Acto knife because it's right here, it's pretty quick. Go ahead and trim a little bit of that, just that little piece right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a sliver off here just to make sure that that's gonna fit fine. Now let's check it out. And we'll slide right in. Okay. Now you have a really nice base to arrange platforms on. So your unique ground plan, uh, go ahead and when you begin this part of your process, go ahead and take this guy out. It's way easier to work with when you don't have to do it trying to get your hands inside the box. Save the box for later. Now, in the same idea that the white model is a sketch model, right? We're trying to get ideas out, trying to understand where space lives positively and negatively, right? We're just gonna move pieces around until we find a shape that we like. So, when you begin this process, uh, you can either, just put some down, see what happens, right? I find that in this space, sometimes symmetry works well and sometimes it doesn't. This is going to be pretty boring. All right, but now you start to work up kind of a, a ground plan that is step-like. Uh, this feels monolithic in a way. 
Um, I find typically that if you take this idea of symmetry and then what if you shift it, rotate it slightly, uh, it becomes vastly more interesting, right? So let's see what these steps, how tall are these? Let's move these platforms out of the way. Maybe these steps fit right in there. These platforms can come down here. Do something like that. Can you see that? I'm gonna go ahead and break the fourth wall for a moment. Hold on, everybody. Keep your hands inside the vehicle at all times. Okay. So that was very quick and already it's looking pretty interesting. All right, hold on, hold on. Ooh. I want to show you a couple that I've pre-arranged just so you can get an idea of what you can do and where you can go with this project. Move this out of the way. All right, here's our empty model box. And I think you guys have seen this one already, but it's one that I've been kind of messing around with for a couple years now, just to get basic shapes and ideas down. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is a little bit of both worlds of the white model and this project, right? So we've got a set of platforms and stairs. Scale figure always. Um, you should have one extra from your white model project, or you can even use the scale figure from your white model project. So I've got platforms and I've taken some Bristol, cut it into basic shapes, scored it, and made a couple walls to help block off some of that space. You can see that I've used uh, one of our tall, long platforms here in the back. And because I was messing around, I want to go ahead and I made another one, right? Because I wanted two pillars. You don't have to do that. The only thing I ask of you is that you use each one of your platform pieces to the best of your ability in some way, shape, or form. Um, when we are moving through these projects, we always want to make sure that the back wall, right back here, is down in here, that that is treated in some way, whether it is something as basic as just a white cyclorama. So we understand that we're, we're looking at something that is complete and total, right? So now we've got that white backdrop back there. We've got a couple dowels in the center here to give us some vertical space. So that's like one example of where you could go and what you can do. Uh, let me show you a couple more. Hold, please. Here is another one that I put together the other day. Right, so you can see the platforms, step-like, much like Appiah's designs for opera, monolithic and solid, right? They feel immovable. I've added to this model two, two scenic portals, right? Which are these rectangles here. Scenic portals are a really wonderful way to eke in space, right? So we wanna take all the energy from the audience, give it to the stage, and by funneling, funneling this bit of scenery, it brings all that energy forward, right? It brings it all upstage. And it's a way to reduce your wing space as well. Now, they don't have to be blank like these are. These are just an architectural idea. These could be ornate. Maybe if I had, uh, after looking at this and understanding that I love this idea, and I like this little backdrop that I printed out, right? This is just from the internet, little Google search shows like hanging gardens. Maybe that will be interesting. And I found this bit of shape and idea that I thought would work well with what I had going on down here. 
So I went ahead and printed that out and I just taped it, right? Just taped it to the back and then added these portals. I think in a future version of this model, I would take some of this architecture uh, and some of this foliage idea and I would probably put it onto these portals down here and create a whole hanging garden kind of opera world, right? So that is another version of what you could do. Let me show you the ground plan. It might be a little hard to see past the portals, right? But it's kind of close to what happened with the other one. Just a, not a set of stairs there, but it feels vastly different in some way. And if you wanted to go completely bonkers off the wall, you could do something like this. Okay. So I found um, this moon backdrop uh, that I really enjoyed. I think I just typed in moon, night sky, Google, found some good stuff. Printed it out landscape so it was a little wider than portrait. You can see here that I've got only the smaller of the platforms really on the base. And then I've created this monolithic structure with the larger uh, 8 by 8 sections with this kind of heavy weight hanging over the space. And now I have some ideas that I think I'm going to explore moving forward. Um, as you move through this project and find, find shapes and ground plans that you like, don't glue them down until you feel really solid about it. You know, maybe use a little tape, get them put together, move them around a little bit, come back to it, look at it, move it around again. Um, once you feel like you really, really enjoy the space that you've created, then come back and do a little bit of gluing, all right? The way you would glue that platform, I've got one here, let's see. The way you would glue that platform when you lock them in place, you do not need a lot of glue. You're gonna use this craft glue, and you're gonna take the smallest little dab on each corner of your platform, just the dab, 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 and dab. That's all you need, just a little bit to lock it onto that bristle that you put, that you put down in your model box. Um, so that being said, if you have questions throughout this process, get a hold of me.